So I have lost over 100 pounds on a ketogenic diet, and I've done that with meal prepping, making sure that my meals are ready to go, meal planning, and that's what saved me. That's kind of what helped me through my whole journey to lose 100 pounds. Uh, so that's why I like sharing these videos with you guys, and it gives you some ideas to have for dinner. Maybe work it in with your meal plan, and maybe prep even a few of these meals so that you have it on hand. I'm a busy, busy wife and mom. I work a 45 hour week, you guys, and we cook at home all the time. I always advocate cooking at home. If you can't make time to do it, then meal prep. Set aside a couple hours and just meal prep so that you guys have meals for the next few days. That's Welcome back to my channel, it's Janet, and if you're new here, make sure you hit that red subscribe button. Give this video a like to let me know that you're liking my content, and don't forget to hit that notification bell so that YouTube can notify you when I upload a new video. And if you're a returning subscriber, then welcome back to my channel. All right, everyone, today is the day that I announced the winner of the giveaway. As you guys have seen in my previous video last week, I did a giveaway announcement with these two items that I'm going to be giving away. It was open to anywhere in the world. So the winner of the giveaway is Danielle Marie. Congratulations, Danielle. Uh, make sure that you email me. I will have my email information listed down below. Email me so I can get these mailed off to you and I hope you enjoy these and thank you so much for entering the contest and thank you for all my subscribers for entering, for going on Instagram and writing your favorite keto meal. You guys had some great ideas. A lot of those are my favorites as well too. So thank you so much for everybody and I love you all and thank you so much for being here and watching my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you um, some dinner ideas that I had made over the course of four days. Um, and all of them are really, really simple and easy. You may have made them already before. Maybe it gives you some uh, new ideas in order to try for dinner tonight. Um, so in this video, I am going to be sharing a chicken Parmesan recipe. My whole family loved that meal, I'm telling you guys. Uh, they absolutely loved it. It was a it was a family favorite, so I guarantee that your family will love it as well too. I also made a cheese um, clubhouse wrap with the folio wraps that you will see me make as well. I also made some nachos, you guys. These are keto nachos, so you want to stay tuned for that. And the last thing that I made was just some steak with a couple sides. If that's what you're interested in, then keep on watching. I am going to be making some keto nachos today, you guys. So I just started by frying up some venison meat. Uh, we are hunters, so we either use um, deer burger or elk burger. So I ended up just frying up some of this, and then I am gonna put some of the taco mixture in here. You guys can use um, whatever taco mixture you want, any sort of seasoning. Some people even make their own. Um, but I do this way. This is two carbs for a sixth of the package. So pretty reasonably in carbs. But like I said, you guys can either make your own as well too. So I'm just going to put all of that in here. And then I'm going to put a little bit of water as well. I don't use too, too much water, but um, you guys can figure out how much water you want to use with your seasoning. I just don't like mine um, very liquidy. I just like the flavoring to be pretty strong if I am having that is something um, like taco salad or tacos or nachos or something like that. So we're just going to put that and then cook it up a little bit more just so that all the flavorings um, get in the burger and then we will assemble our nachos you guys. Really really simple meal tonight so I will get back to you in the next clip when this is all done. All right, the first clip that I had on how I was making it didn't record, but um, I just poured the Quest chips on a pie plate. You guys can use whatever sort of plate that you want, but I put mine in the oven to melt the cheese. 
Um, these are the uh, Quest chips that I use. They're the nacho cheese flavor. Then I just put a scoopful of my meat mixture, my taco meat mixture, and put a handful of cheese. Um, I had mentioned, um, I will mention to make sure that you use however much your macros will allow. I don't measure because I'm in maintenance right now, but I do encourage you guys to measure as always, just to make sure that you're not going over your net carbs or having too many calories or anything like that. Cause you wanna make sure that you're, you're in a deficit if you're still losing, right? All right, and then I'm going to add some salsa on the top. This is the salsa that I use. It's just the medium Tostitos and it's not too, too bad for carbs. It is two carbs and one fiber in two tablespoons. So that makes it one net carb. And I'm gonna put, put a scoop on top of my nachos. And then also I'm going to put on some sour cream. This is the full fat sour cream and the macros for this is two carbs per two tablespoons. So also too, if you guys, um, if you have maybe um, tomatoes on hand or you have green onions, that as well would um, be perfect on top of this as well. But this is the way that I like my nachos. Um, that is what I'm going to have for dinner. And also wanted to mention, I did put this on broil. I put it on low just for a couple minutes um, is all you need until the cheese starts to melt. So that is going to be what's for dinner tonight. Guys, for supper tonight, I am going to be making some deer steaks. Um, we're hunters, so that's all we have is venison meat um, for um, in lieu of beef. We still get chicken and ham, um, but we do have a year's supply of um, elk meat and deer meat that we have for the whole entire year. That's always our goal. And we do butcher our own animals as well too. So today I um, am gonna have some deer steaks and I marinate mine. I prefer to have mine marinated, even if it is summer and it's barbecue season, I still marinate mine. Um, I just do a quick mixture of olive oil, olive oil, soy sauce, Worcestershire sauce, and some spices, steak spice, salt and pepper. Um, and I put a little bit of Italian dressing in here as well too, because Jimmy does like Italian dressing with his steak. So that's what I used for the marinade. These have been marinating for about two days. So this is what we're going to have for supper tonight. So since it's still kind of chilly here, we don't have the barbecue quite going. We do barbecue in the winter time, even in here in Canada, but I just decided that I'm going to pan fry these. They're still really, really good when you pan fry them. So I just put a little bit of olive oil in this pan and I have it about on medium heat, and I am going to cook up these steaks. We like start, we like our steaks about medium, medium rare, um, but you guys can cook up your steaks however you like them, but um, steak is a really, really good uh, source of protein, especially on keto. Just make sure that you're mixing some fat um, with your steaks, especially um, if you are having venison like us. This is very, very lean meat. There is no marbling. There is not a lot of fat on um, deer or elk. So I always make sure that I add some fat to my meal when I'm having um, steak. So we are going to fry these up. All right, well, this is frying up. I'm actually just going to put some spinach. <clears throat> I use frozen spinach, so they come in these little um, nuggets and I put them in the microwave just a little bit of water and I'm going to put those in the microwave and we are going to be making a cream creamed spinach side dish as well to go with these steaks so I'm just going to prep this as well while my steak is cooking all right we are going to make the cream spinach the spinach is almost done sorry we're going to make the cream spinach the it's almost done here in the microwave so you probably will hear it beep in uh, a little bit but we are just going to put a little bit of olive oil in the bottom of that. Um, I'm going to add my seasonings afterwards, and I'm not a big fan of onion. Um, sometimes I put onions in this, but I'm not going to today. I just have it on low. Um, there we go. I turned my steaks down to low as well, so they are just cooking in the next frying pan over here. 
And let's just get our cream spinach. Perfect. So this is what it ends up looking like out of the microwave. So it's pretty much all done. I just squeeze um, the excess out of it as well too. But today we are going to be making some cream spinach. This is going to be super, super easy. I'm just gonna put some cream cheese in the, in the thing. I will find a recipe. I normally don't do a recipe. Um, I just kind of add it until it tastes good to be honest so that is what I'm doing today um, but I will find a recipe and link it down below you guys all right so another thing I'm going to try that is going to be new today is um, some brie some brie cheese so I've never had brie cheese and this is um, the brie brie I'm not sure even how to pronounce it I've never had it before so I'm going to use a little bit of that because I feel like I've heard it's a really creamy cheese, so I'm gonna put a little bit of that as well too in. Oh, it's already creamy even out of the fridge. All right, I'm gonna do that, and then I'm going to wait until that melts a little bit. Yeah, I didn't make much spinach because I feel like I'm just gonna be the only one that is going to be eating it. So let's just put these, mix these together so it's somewhat melted before we add before we add our spinach. So we'll just melt this down a little bit with the olive oil. Like I said, I'm gonna add my seasonings at the end once my spinach is in. Okay, so this is melted a little bit. Before it gets too melted, I'm gonna add in my spinach and I have this on low. And I drained my spinach, so I'm just gonna add that right in the pan. And then we're just going to mix it all together. Like I said, I didn't make very much, you guys. Definitely, um, if your whole family loves spinach, you can definitely make more. We're just going to mix it all together. I'm going to add my seasonings right now. And I'm just going to be adding some pink Himalayan salt. Some pepper. And I'm also going to add some garlic salt. You guys can feel free to put some um, fresh garlic in here as well too, some onions. You guys can flavor it up however you'd like it. This is just what I prefer um, as a little side dish. And it's looking all creamy already, looks delicious. All right, and also what I'm going to do, I'm just gonna actually give it a little bit of a taste test. Make sure that everything tastes good. Oh yeah, that's good. I think that's good. All right, and what I'm going to do at the very end here, I'm gonna turn my stove off and I'm just going to add a little bit of shredded matzo cheese. All right, a little bit of shredded cheese, and we're going to mix that. I turned the stove off. Sorry if you can hear my steaks. I kind of just put a little bit, uh, I put them on high just so they, they can get a nice outer edge. All right, and that is going to be a good way to add fat to your meal, you guys, just by adding a simple dish. Um, of spinach and mixing it lots of fat so I have lots of cheese in there the cream cheese the the brie and some of the shredded cheese and this is what's going to be our side dish and that's gonna have a lot of the fat all right so that is done I'm also going to have some cauliflower rice so let me grab that all right you guys um, I bought this the other day I've made this before I really like this for the convenience of it and I do like the taste and texture of it it's the cauliflower rice with the cheese sauce and these are the macros for it as you can see six carbs and two fiber which is one cup um, so it's four net carbs for one cup which is about a little bit more than half of this serving 
So that is what I'm going to have as well as a side. I do add a little bit more fat. I'll add a little bit of cream cheese probably to this or sour cream or sometimes both depending on my macros. And I might add a little bit more cheese. If I had some um, cooked bacon, I would add that as well. But this is super easy. You just make it in the microwave, throw it in there and you're good to go. So let's do that. All right, this is it just out of the bag. And I usually doctor it up a little bit because it is I find it just kind of bland for my taste. Um, so I usually add a little bit of, a little bit of cream cheese. And I'll add a little bit of mozzarella cheese. You can add whatever cheese that you like. And then I add a little bit of sour cream. Sour cream, there we go. And then I also do have some bacon bits. I didn't think I did, but I usually cook more bacon than I always need, just so I have some in the fridge. Um, let me see how much I have. Yes, I do. So I have a little bit of bacon here that I'm just gonna throw all of this in. Perfect, use that up. Then I just mix it together and I will have half of this and the other half I will keep um, for a meal prep for tomorrow. So I just mix this all together and I will have half of this. So let's get ready to plate up all of our meal for supper, you guys. And yeah, so this is actually a really, really low carb meal. Um, the only carbs that would have, um, this would have probably about two carbs because the things that we added was just the fat and same with this. This has, I would say the half a serving, which was what, four carbs, I believe. And of course, um, venison doesn't have any carbs. Um, even with the amount that I used for the mar marinating sauce, it doesn't have much carbs at all. So yeah, this meal is probably about six net carbs, I would say. So a really good, very, very good meal will keep you satisfied and full, high in protein. And yeah, it's something that you guys, probably your whole family would even like too. So this is what I'm having for dinner tonight. All right, for tonight's supper, I am going to make some chicken parmesan with some asparagus. So I already did the asparagus. All I did is just put some parchment paper on a cookie sheet and um, put my asparagus on there. Then I put some oil and I make sure that it was all covered with the oil. Then I put salt and pepper. So I'm gonna put these in the oven and I'm gonna let them cook for about 15 to 20 minutes. And while that is baking in the oven, I'm going to get started on the chicken. All right, so for the chicken, what I'm going to do is I am just going to half these chicken breasts that I have. So what I'm going to do is just cut these in half and make them kind of more thin. For so long, I've been trying to get you out of my head. Oh yeah. But somehow... Also, we are going to just make these a little bit thinner and we are going to give them a little bit of, uh, pound them down a little bit so they are thinner. So I'm just gonna put some saran wrap on top. And I don't have one of those um, that have the spikes on the end to make it thinner, so I'm just gonna use my, um, okay, so those are flattened out. And what I'm gonna do is just kind of create a little wash station as well too, because we are going to be um, doing a little coating on these. So I'm just gonna put my chicken aside. And this is just gonna be my um, little wash that I'm going to do. I'm going to do um, egg mixture and I'm gonna do a coconut flour mixture because I am allergic to almond flour. So hopefully that'll work out. In past, I have used um, pan panko, I think they're called. And that works pretty good if you guys wanted to use that. But I'm just gonna use, um, I'm just gonna use the coconut flour. And then in this, I'm gonna put some of my coconut flour. There we go, and I'm gonna put a little bit of seasoning in there. So I'm just gonna put some black pepper and some salt. And 
And also I'm gonna put some garlic salt as well too. And some of my chicken seasoning. So for chicken, I really like the Montreal chicken spice. So I'm gonna put some of that in there as well too. All right, and then we're just gonna give that a little stir. All right, I'm also going to make up another one just for Jimmy's. Um, this, he'll, he can have regular flour, so I'm just gonna do the same mixture just with regular flour in this one. All right, so over here I have my pan and I'm gonna have that on high and I'm going to um, put enough oil in it so that I can kind of um, fry these because you do have to fry them for a little bit before putting them into our pan. Um, to go into the oven. So I'm just gonna put some oil on the bottom of that, make sure that it's on a high heat, and then let's start dredging the chicken and then I will put it in the pan. So I am going to actually do mine first and then I'll do Jimmy's just so that I can keep it separate. So all you're doing is taking your piece of chicken, putting it in the egg wash, and then putting it through in the coconut flour and then putting it in the pan. So let's do that first. Mm -hmm. I just want to love you a little to see where this is going. I really need to know, babe. Can we just open up? Cause I got to know if you feel the things I do. I might need some help if you let me. I'm just going to do these four and then I'll do the last two. So what we're going to do is just make sure that they get crispy on each side. So I would say approximately four minutes on each side. And then what I'm going to do is put them in our glass dish. And we're going to use a little bit of the pasta sauce. You can use whatever pasta you, sauce you like. These ones are, um, it's six net carbs for a half a cup. I definitely won't be using that much per serving. All right, so we're just gonna put a little bit at the bottom of our pan. And these are ready to be flipped over, it looks like. Okay. And then I'm just gonna finish cooking the other side and put them in our pan. I cook those in oil for, I would say maybe three minutes each, each side. The coconut flour, it does, um, I don't want to say burn, but it does smoke up really, really fast. So you have to be <laughs> have to be quick. So next we are going to do, I separated them. So I actually put my family's that were made with the flour. I put that all in this dish and then I put my two in this dish just so I could tell which ones were which. So now I'm just going to put a little bit of the marinara sauce on the top. And then I am going to put some of the mozzarella cheese. Um, I have a little bit of mozzarella and then I have some Parmesan, so I'm going to use a mixture on top and see how it turns out. So let's go ahead and do that and then we are going to put this in the oven. For so long, I've been thinking that we're more than just friends, oh yeah. cheese that I'm going to be using. It's just shredded Parmesan cheese, one carb per uh, 30 grams. So I'm going to put that on top of our chicken and sauce. And there we go. Next we are going to throw them in the oven and we will let them cook. I will put the temperature and how long I cook it for up on the screen. I can't remember off the top of my head for how long and at what temperature. So let's do that. 
All right, and also as another side is we are going to have a salad. So I just picked this up at the grocery store the other day. Um, it's just a small garden salad. Um, looks like it has some peppers, cucumbers, lettuce, a little bit of cabbage, um, and some purple onion. So I'm going to also have this as a side dish as well, and probably my rest of the family will too, because they do love salad. All right, so my asparagus is almost done. So I've already turned it over once. So what I'm going to put on top is just a little bit of the Parmesan cheese, the shredded Parmesan. And I am just gonna sprinkle that all over the asparagus just to give it a little bit more flavor and a little bit more fat as well too. So I'm going to do that and let it cook for another, I don't know, five, 10 minutes or so. There we go. I'm just gonna put it on half of them because I, Jimmy might not want Parmesan cheese on his. So there we go. I'm going to let that cook for another five minutes or so. All right, the Parmesan is all melted on the asparagus, and this is out of the oven. And the chicken should be done right away, and then let's make our plate. All right, just took the chicken Parmesan out of the oven. These two pieces are mine with the coconut flour. Look absolutely delicious. And then these are for the rest of my family. Looks really, really good. So let's all plate it up. All right, everyone, this is the final plate. We have our Parmesan, chicken Parmesan um, here with our chicken with and crusted with the um, coconut flour with a little bit of marinara sauce topped with the Parmesan shredded cheese. Then I just have a garden salad with ranch dressing on top and some asparagus with the shredded Parmesan just put on there right before I took it out of the oven. And this is what's going to be for supper tonight, you guys. High in fat and low in carbs, just how we like it. All right, for supper tonight, you guys, I'm gonna keep it simple and I am going to have one of these folios and I'm going to make a clubhouse sandwich out of it. These things are delicious. If you guys haven't tried these, you must. I get mine at Costco, but I've also seen them at grocery stores. Um, they have very, very good macros and they have good flavor. So one wrap is seven grams of fat, one carb and one fiber, making it zero net carbs. And also the protein is 13 grams um, and 130 calories. So sometimes I do double these up actually. Um, I'm not going to today, but sometimes I do, um, just so that it gives it a little bit more flavor and gives me some more fat and some more calories depending on how much I've eaten today. And um, yeah, so I'm just gonna use the one though today because I'm going to keep my other one for tomorrow for my lunch actually. But right now I'm going to make one and I will show you what I put on it and they are so good. So I make a little slit down the bottom half of it. And then what I do is I put mayonnaise on the whole entire thing. I use um, the Hellman's mayonnaise. This is what I've used through my whole journey to lose weight. I use it now in maintenance. Um, depending how clean you're eating your keto um, on your weight loss journey, but I've done this throughout my whole journey and it hasn't affected me. So I just take some mayo and put it on the whole entire wrap. And then we actually just do um, things in the quarters. So I will show you what that means. Um, I seen this on TikTok for the first time. And ever since I seen it, I've just been implementing it all the time. So I'm going to use this smoked black forest ham. It's the maple leaf brand. And this one has good macros for four slices. It is zero carbs, 1.5 fat and 12 grams of protein. So I usually use about two or three slices of this. I think today I'm going to use um, two slices. So I'm gonna put the two slices just on the first little quarter here. And then on the next quarter, I have made some bacon. So I'm putting one slice of bacon. This is just one slice cut up into three. So I'm gonna put that on the next little section. 
Then I am going to add some lettuce. I bought this lettuce, it's the single cut romaine. Um, I use it as well for um, like egg salad or tuna salad. They make really, really good wraps for that. But I'm just gonna break mine apart and put it on another little quarter here. There we go. And then I'm actually going to um, put some a little bit of cheese on the last quarter and I'm going to slice up a pickle as well just to give it a little bit of crunch. So this is kind of like a different clubhouse. I don't have any chicken right now, chicken or turkey, because um, if I did have some roast chicken, I would put that on as well. Um, but I don't today, so I'm just going to have it as is. Um, kind of make it more of a sandwich, I guess, more than a clubhouse. And then I'm going to just add the pickle just on the last quarter here as well too. All right, and then what you do is you're just gonna fold it. Fold it once, and then fold it again, and then fold it one more time. And that is going to be your sandwich. And it is so good, you guys. It's one of my favorite meals. I make it numerous times a week. It's that good. And so let's plate it up and I'm gonna have a few sides to go along with it for tonight's dinner. All right, so I added some pork rinds here and I'm also going to use this Daniel's dill dip that I got in Medicine Hat. It's a local made product and it is keto. So the macros are actually really, really good. It has zero carbs. So I am going to have a serving of that uh, with my pork rinds. And then I will show you guys the final product. All right, you guys, this is the final plate and what I'm going to have for dinner tonight. Some of the dill dip. I also put a pickle on the side, the pork rinds, and the folio, folio wrap that I made. And, oh man, it's so good. Sorry if you guys have seen this on another video. I know I make it all the time, but it's literally one of my favorite meals and it's satisfying and it fills me up. So that is going to be what's for dinner tonight. All right, you guys, that's the end of the video. Thank you so much for being here and watching this video. I hope it gives you some dinner ideas to make for you and your family. Like I said, my family loved that chicken parmesan. I highly recommend making that. It's probably even with stuff that you already have at home, which is always good. Also too, if you guys have tried any of my recipes, let me know down below as well too. I love hearing feedback from you guys. I love hearing what you liked, what you didn't like, or even recipes that you wanted me to try or maybe even keto -fy it, right? Um, make sure that you hit that red subscribe button, give this video a like, and make sure that you hit that notification bell so YouTube can notify you when I upload a video. Thanks for watching.